Hello, everybody. Welcome to this online lecture, Farm Capability Building by Kaizen Approach. My name is Kenshi Naba, a JICA expert. Let me introduce the objective of this online lecture. Last year, we produced an online video material how to cope with COVID-19 by utilizing Kaizen and provide it through JICANET library to show how Kaizen can be utilized in corporate management. Under the difficult business situation due to the pandemic of COVID-19, I believe Kaizen that can enhance productivity and reduce costs have become more important. Based on the paradigm shift after COVID-19, this video material provides lectures in three sessions, management strategy, accounting, and quality of management, with the aim of going beyond traditional Kaizen to improve the management of the entire company. Before moving on to the lecture, Mr. Go Oga, a chief of JICA survey team of Africa Kaizen Network, will introduce about what is Kaizen and the Africa Kaizen Initiative. My name is Go Oga, the JICA expert. So I just would like to provide you the two simple subjects. The first one is what is Kaizen? And second one is Africa Kaizen Initiatives by Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, and Aldenebert to disseminate Kaizen in Africa. So first one, what is Kaizen? The Kaizen is a Japanese word which originally means a changes for the better. In the Japanese manufacturing industry, the Kaizen was used for techniques and tools for improvement of quality and productivity, and it is now recognized worldwide. In the Kaizen Handbook published by JICA in 2018, the Kaizen activity is described in a broader meaning. The Kaizen activity includes any activities to make companies better not only productivity and quality improvement techniques, but also marketing, financing, and human resource development, etc. So this video summarizes major characteristics and effects of Kaizen. Among the five characteristics listed, the first one, participatory, indicates the promotion and encouragement of participation by every member of an organization. The second one continues emphasis on the accumulation of daily activities, which leads to the big results. The third one is scientific approach based on the statistical data. The fourth one Economical indicates placement of a value on a using brain to create much more ideas rather than making a lot of investment. The fifth one, universal, indicates its broad applicability, easy to use tools and allows anyone to implement it without special technology or equipment in any field organization or size. With a strong inclination toward human resource development, the Kaizen enables implementing organizations to develop discipline, engagement, and teamwork of individuals, and ultimately strengthen the farm capabilities, as well as to improve quality and the productivity of goods and services. I believe these firm capabilities are the source of company growth even to fight against COVID-19. So finally, let me just introduce the Africa Kaizen Initiative. In 2017, African Union Development Agency, New Partnership for Africa's Development, Aldenepat, together with JICA launched Africa Kaizen Initiative to disseminate Kaizen concept more in Africa. This online lecture are also developed by one of the activities of this AKI. 
For more information of AKI, please visit the portal site of AKI in Arduino Network. You can download the Kaizen Handbook I often mentioned so far. We talked about the introduction and background of this video material so far. Let's move on to the main part of the lecture. Hello everybody. My name is Kakiuchi. I'm an expert of JICA. Today, I want to talk one of the unique aspects of JICA Kaizen, which is not usually explained in this kind of Kaizen lecture. That is management strategy. The goal of Kaizen is firm capability building, and it is recognized and is expanded to many countries as a tool to improve productivity and quality in short term. This is the current curriculum of Kaizen program. You can find many kinds of tools to improve quality and productivity. However, there is also a curriculum such as management strategy and business management to improve management quality. And it is a program aimed at training managers and consultants not only for improving productivity, but also for continuous improvement of farm capability. In this lecture, I'd like to introduce these different aspects of Kaizen that improve the quality of management. And also, I want to introduce the companies that have improved the quality of management and achieved HR development through the Kaizen method. I will give you the question, what is the PDCA cycle of company management? First thing we need to do for company management is clarify the mission of the company, which means what the company is for and what it is aiming for. Because if this is unclear, stakeholders will not emphasize. In other words, stakeholders will not invest your company. And employees cannot understand what they should aim for. And we have to specify the domain. That is, the range of what added value is provided to whom, and by which product or services. Clarified companies why, what, how, by the mission and domain. Based on this business direction, we will define what we will look for coming four or five years with general management figures. It's called vision or management strategy or medium term business plan. The next thing things we need to do is a concrete business plan for the near future based on the management strategy. The image of the near future is one year, so it will be an annual business plan. This business plan consists of detailed management figures such as sales, profit, and investment, and is treated as a commitment internally and externally. Therefore, the plan included risk focus such as environment change during that period. Business plans are made as annual plan, and they are generally accumulated monthly. Therefore, the results are managed monthly. At this time, while analyzing the difference between the plan and result, we will analyze the change from the environmental focus assumed at the time of formulating the management strategy and business plan. And we make action plan and execute it during the period. This is business control. In addition, this analysis will be used for next medium term business plan. So these three activities of company strategy, annual business plan, and business control are the PDCA cycle of company management. The Kaizen program has a curriculum to explain each function. 
But at the first session of this lecture, due to time constraint, I will only explain an overview of business control, which is a trigger of business cycle and the starting point of corporate diagnosis. In the second session, I'll explain accounting, which is a map or a compass for PDCA or company management. And in the last session, we will introduce a company that are improving the quality of management through typical Kaizen method. So I start to explain for business control. Business control has two aspects. One is gap analysis between actual and plan. The other one is environment analysis between plant condition and current condition. This analysis is not only the basis of business management, but also the basis of consulting. Firstly, I'll explain the typical procedure for gap analysis. As mentioned earlier, business control begins with an analysis based on the business plan. In addition, the business plan is basically made by breaking down the annual goal into monthly one. Let me give you a concrete example. For example, as shown in this figure, with the actual results appeared up the first three months of the year. Many things can be analyzed from the gap between the actual result and plan in those three months. Unfortunately, in this case, the plan has not been achieved in the first three months. If we predict this, this term on as is, it will be about 13.5% profit decrease. The factor of gap which we analyze are 1. Market decline from plant volume and the impact to profit is minus 10. 2. Regarding to share, market share, product share. Thanks to product performance, we gain the share more than plant percentage and the impact to profit is plus 3. However, it is not covering the market declining impact. Okay, number 3. Cost down progress is not good. Estimated result will be a three negative impact for the profit. Lastly, the model mix has negative impact for profit. Means sales percentage of profitable products are reduced from plan. This impact to the profit is minus 10. And business group summarize the action plan with opportunity and risk like this. They decided the action like to the marketing investment for specific area and promote cost down activity. Market trend is uncontrollable issue, right? So they list them as risk and opportunity. This management cycle improves the quality of business management and the quality of manage. In this way, when we analyze the gap between the result and the plan, we analyze the environment of the business. The analysis of environment is an important analysis point when we create company management strategy. So environment analysis in business control has a meaning of reviewing the condition of the company strategy. And this analysis will become the basis for the next medium term business plan. Have you understand the cycle of company management? This internal external environment analysis is also a starting point when consulting a new company as a management consultant. Therefore, let's check the environment analysis from the perspective of company analysis when consulting a certain company. One thing to consider when diagnosing a company is that the factor of company management is complexity, volatility, 
and uncertainty. So it is not easy to create. For example, do you objectively understand the strengths and weaknesses of your company? The external environment related to company management also have many factors such as political regulation, economic trend, and new technology, etc. Do you always track the trend of them? When organizing such complex environment, it is important to see things in messy as much as possible. Messy is an abbreviation for mutually, exclusive, collectively, and exhaustive. And it is an idea and approach to prevent leakage and duplication of things in order to maintain logical consistency. We will utilize the framework to analyze the environment of company management in this method. Today, let's proceed with internal and external environment analysis while introducing some frameworks. Okay, let's start to study for environment analysis. First of all, we'll try to visualize the internal environment and clarify own strengths. To do it, let's study the concept of intellectual asset. Usually, company assets are shown in balance sheet. However, some of the important assets are not listed in balance sheet, such as human resources. All assets recorded in balance sheet are represented by money. Traditionally, when analyzing or valuing a company, we have targeted assets that represented these numbers. However, the following assets that are clearly the value of the company are not expressed in the balance sheet. Okay, for example, high skill engineer with high technology, highly motivated and challenging employees, know how cultivated over many years. Network with partner company that support our company. They are not reflected in the balance sheet because they are difficult to see from outside of the company. And it is difficult to divide the amount. These assets are called intellectual assets. Intellectual assets are intangible assets that are not described in conventional balance sheet and as a source of competitiveness in companies, that is, their strength. It refers to invisible management resources, such as human resources, technology, the value of patent, skills, organization, management philosophy, and network that don't appear in financial statements. Many people haven't noticed it because it had to see. They haven't noticed it, so they haven't been able to utilize it. Intellectual assets are classified to three classifications. One is network assets, which are associated with a company's external relationship, like a relationship with supplier and customer. Also, brand image is in this classification. Second is structural asset that the company has structure. Even if the company leaves the company, this asset remains in the company. Like a company culture, procedure system, and standard book. Third is HR asset, human resources asset, which is an individual asset of the employee. Therefore, if the employee leaves the company, it will not remain in the company. Like an innovation, know-how, motivation, and creativity ability which specific employee has. For your easy understanding, I explained by more concrete example. Okay? Now there is a famous bakery that has a reputation for being delicious. It is known that this bakery has the following intellectual asset. One, Used equipment. 
Two, chef who trained in France. Three, store secret temperature control. Four, know how to bake is exquisite. Five, always serve freshly bread. Six, bake many times a day. Seven, good cell focus. Eight, good material. Nine, owner worked at the former wholesale. Ten, there is a purchasing rule. And finally, some of the material are purchased from the nearby farmer. If we divided these assets into three classifications, this figure is like this. From the perspective of management strategy, it is necessary to formulate a strategy of how to appeal these strengths as a customer value and lead to the development of the company while considering the changing external environment, like, like COVID-19. In addition, human assets don't remain when the person leaves the company, so you should recognize that how to change them into structural assets will be a key point in business management. Next approach to find own strengths and weaknesses is value chain perspective. The value chain is the flow of the business. For example, this chart is usual manufacturing company value chain. Development, design, Design included the cosmetic design and the engineering design, and production, marketing, logistic, and after strategy. By this framework called value chain, we analyze the strong point and weak point of the campaign. For example, suppose you analyze that your development and sales capability are stronger than competitors but your design, manufacturing, and after-service are weaker than your competition. From the fact, you can select two ways as following business strategy. One, since a strong path should be strengthened more, and the weak part will be outsourced. Second selection, strengthen the weak point and strengthen overall company capability. Whichever you choose, you need to decide where to invest your limited asset. And it is one of the most important decisions for the future of your company. So this framework can support correct management decision while visualizing it. Next framework for visualizing own strengths and weakness is Burio. Burio analysis is a framework born in 1991. The name came from the head letter of B, value, R, realness, I, imitability, and O, organization. This framework is useful for the analysis of the differentiation for your particular product, your particular services, a business, and your company itself. For example, when you check the differentiation for your unique services, you should check how the service has the value for the customer and how the service has awareness to the competitive services and how the service has imitability to competitors and how your organization has advantage. The organization means if your company has the sales network globally and it is one of a key factor of the service. It is a big advantage for the service and it prevents companies from entering. Of course, without anybody and awareness, even you have organizational advantage, the service does not have strength. So V R I O is the order to check the differentiation. So you ch check the current situation for the service, product, and business like this one. And you can recognize the strengths and weaknesses. 
For example, if you find your unique business has value and awareness, but doesn't have imitability, the business doesn't have long-term advantage because the competitor makes similar service soon. So you should consider to possibility to get patent or something to prevent the enter from the outside. Let's move on to external environment analysis. On the first, I'll introduce pest analysis, which is useful to see complex external environment. Pest analysis is a framework that analyzes the macro environment from the four perspectives of political environment, economic environment, social environment, and technical environment. The name PEST came from the headletter of political, economic, sociological, and technological. First, from the perspective of politics, how and to what extent the government intervenes in the economy. Political regulation can be also entered here and have a significant impact on your business. Next, economic included economic growth, interest rate, exchange rate, and inflation. These factors have a significant impact on how a company operates and makes decisions. Sociological included the cultural aspect, also including health awareness, population growth, age distribution, career attitude, and focus on safety. The final technology includes technical aspects such as R&D activities, automation, technical incentive, and the spread of technical change. The recent evolution of IT technology has an impact not only on the manufacturing industry, but also on many industries. To better understand the past, let's analyze the current external environment of Japanese automotive industry as an example. Okay? As a political environment, I pick up the few factors. Promotion of e-vehicle by politics and government. Trend of China in the largest market, which is always a focus in the trade war. Economical environment. At present, production in Japan trend to shrink. And if capital investment is actively made overseas, it may have a small impact on the Japanese economy in the future. Sociological environment, decrease in demand for curb by society, especially young people, and rapid increase in accident by the elderly. Technological environment, improvement in technology, battery, storage battery, sensor technology, etc., can be raised. Usually, Technological information are collected much, so you need to select them efficient. If we can understand the causal relationship between these areas, what kind of future is waiting for the automotive industry? In this way, in pest analysis, it is very meaningful to predict the future from the current relation in which each area influences each other. For example, electric vehicle has opportunity from the political, sociological, and technological viewpoint. At the same time, we can say gasoline vehicle has risk. Also, regarding electric vehicle, new entrants are estimated among new technologies. It makes risk for current automotive company. However, pest analysis is listing up the fact for risk and opportunity prediction. So it will not lead strategy directly. 
Next framework I introduce is five fourths. Five fourths is a framework that visualizes and organizes the business environment from the five perspectives of competitor, new entrant, substitute, supplier, and buyer. In particular, it is characteristic that it looks not only at analysis for general competitors, but also for substitute product and campaign. For your easy understanding, it is better to show example. This example is an analysis of the music player market by the company called S in 2009. The environment was like this. First, at that time, A company had a 60% market share of the market, and S company had 35% market share. And the market is declining slowly. So therefore, it is a low possibility that new entrants coming to the market. From the perspective of power from the supplier, the key device was a semiconductor. And the long order lead time was the bottleneck. Although the industry has strong buyer power, it was supportive for S company as a counter to a company monopoly. The biggest problem was the e existence of substitute products for music player, which was smartphone. It was thought that the spread of smartphone would shrink the market for music only player. Therefore, at this point, the biggest threat to the external environment can be recognized as the spread of smartphone. So far, as an internal em environment analyst, we have su summarized the strengths and weakness of own campaign. Also, the opportunity and threat of the external environment was subtracted by using framework. SWOT is a framework that summarizes them on the table. SWOT is head letter for strength, weakness, opportunity, and threat, and is a table that summarizes the positive and negative aspects of each of internal and external environment. So far, I have introduced a framework that integrates the internal environment and the external environment. So I think you already understand how to extract it the content of SWOT. The important thing when you organize the SWOT is to clarify the purpose or target. It is important to first set the objective and goal of the analysis. Otherwise, it will be not clear what the analysis is for. For example, when you set the purpose of Expand the sales is creating a new business using all slang. If you set a specific numeric target like a lay sales to 150% compared to previous year, the strategy and action plan will be more concrete and make review easier by PDCA. Let's perform a SWOT analysis on S Company case which was analyzed for the external environment with five fourth little bit earlier. The target is to continue to generate more than 5% profit in this music player market. SWOT was organized in this way from the external analysis and the internal analysis by the five fourth and other framework. We discussed internally and picked up the element and the fact like this table. As strengths, we pick up the huge fact. We have worldwide famous brand. We have wide business field, including business, electronics, movie, and game, etc. 
And we have long history in music player market. And we have high skill engineer for audio technology. As a weakness, we picked up the uh, fact like a weak, we are weakened production system. We are weak position in smartphone business. Other opportunity, we pick up some fact. Okay, main competitor are looking at other business. Main competitor means a company, and other business means smartphone. That is the opportunity for S company, right? Prolonged battery life of smartphone is stagnant. As threat, cloud music distribution services are becoming widespread, degrading the price of smartphone and spreading them worldwide. Thought itself is a visualization of fact. So this alone doesn't create a strategy. But with crosswalk, you can see a little bit clearer direction. Okay, let's try it. Okay, I'll explain the crosswalk. Utilizing each fact extracted by thought, we will make a strategy based on the following four ideas. Okay, first, aggressive attack to take advantage of own company strength for the opportunity. Two, step-by-step -step improvement by reinforcing weakness to take advantage of opportunity. Three, differentiation strategy to take advantage of your strength to survive threat. Four, forward defense measured by understanding weakness and minimize the impact of threat. Generally speaking, to utilize strength is better than to reinforce weakness. Don't you think so? Right? So the approach one and three are better than two and four. Especially approach one is highest priority. Okay, back to the example case. We summarize the strategy by crossword like this. Then we discuss and summarize our future business strategy. Like this two. One, to introduce a high definition audio model to differentiate it from competitor and smartphone as key strategy to utilize our strength. Second, Within the unstable demand condition, which is depend on competitor and smartphone trends, we will create a strategic SCM, supply chain management system, with focusing key model and focusing sales savings. As a result, companies have taken the number one position instead of a company in the Japanese market. Also, they had achieved the target profit in this business. How about that? Did you understand the flow of using the framework to connect to SWOT analysis? Actually, even if you intend to analyze messy using a framework, you will be emotionally biased. I recommend that you incorporate the opinion of as many people as possible and put them together. In this example, we were able to guide the strategy from thought through the crosswalk. But it is generally said that the know-how and experiences are required of interpret the fact to guide the strategy from thought. Some framework provides direction for strategies that should be taken according to the environment. Next, I'd like to introduce some of them. Porter's competitive strategy is one of the ideas that lead to strategy, making from the five force, which was introduced a little bit earlier. As you can see the chart, 
total strategy theory say the company should take three strategies based on the two conditions of target and competitive advantage. And three strategy a cost leadership strategy, differentiation strategy, and focus strategy. Okay, I'll explain it. First is cost leadership. If you have cost competitiveness and the targeting total industry means not a specific market, you should select cost leadership strategy. By producing product at a lower cost than the competition, that strategy is to maintain a cost advantage and secure profit even in the situation of price competition. This is not meaning of low price. This is low cost. Don't misunderstand. Aim to increase market share by reducing costs from economic of scale and experiences curve effect. By gaining the share, the buyer power will be increased and the purchasing cost will be decreased. And as a result, a certain amount of profit can be obtained even if the company sells at a low price. Then, further expansion of market share due to mass sale. That is cost leadership strategy. Next is differentiation strategy. It is a strategy to gain a competitive advantage by trying to differentiate from competitors by using your own uniqueness, which provides customer value that cannot be obtained with other products and other services. There are methods as differentiating products such as quality, design, brand image, services, sales channel, etc. Last one is focus strategy. In a focus strategy, it is important to have a limited target anyway. Because by focusing on a narrow target, you can fight more effectively and efficiently. By considering management resources and meeting the needs of specific target, company can also achieve cost leadership and differentiation at the same time in a narrow range. However, the focus strategy requires a balance between sales and profitability because the volume of targeted customer is limited. So even if profitability is outstanding, there is a possibility it is not established as business due to too small market capacity. Porter's strategy theory is suggesting the strategy in the condition of relation for target and own competitive advantage. However, you should recognize the risk for each strategy. For example, cost leadership strategy has risk which the company needs continuous investment for equipment to maintain cost competitiveness and customer requirement are changed by new innovative technology, products, services, etc. Also, different strategy, differentiation strategy has risk, which differentiation value has not evaluated from the customer by huge price gap from low end price. Also, it has risk that competitor imitates the key feature. Even the focus strategy has risk which the focused differentiation feature become mature. So important point is that after you set the strategy, you should continuously monitor the environment change. Another framework to suggest strategy is PLC and PPM. I'll explain the PLC first. PLC is the abbreviation O for product life. Cycle. PLC theory gives us the strategy for each stage for the life of the product, media, 
market, business model, etc. The stage of the life is divided into four stages. One, introductory period. Second is growth period. Third is maturity period. And last is decline period. There are management strategy and marketing strategy in PLC theory. Today I want to talk about management strategy only. Okay. On the first strategy, a stage of introductory period. The market demand is small, so the sales is low. However, to develop the product and create the market, you need to invest a lot of money. So you cannot get profit in this period. But you need it for making next period, uh, stage. And there is not many competitors. Okay. Second stage is growth period. Net sales and profit will be expanded. However, many new competitors join the market. So you need to invest money to maintain it. Third stage is maturity period. The market grows slow, but the both sales and profit peak. It is an important issue for high-ranking company to take advantage of cost and maintain market share. And for low-ranking company, it is important to have a niche strategy aimed at a specific target to survive. Last stage is decline period. It is the most difficult stage for high-ranking company. Maybe you have enough profit, but it is declining step by step. So you need to decide when you leave this market. But if most competitors leave the market, you have a possibility to enjoy survival profit. Next, I will introduce the PPM. PPM is a product portfolio management. This is a management analysis method proposed by Boston Consulting Group in 1970. PPM is expanded from PLC, includes the company's position in the market. So, if the product has high share position in growth period, the product is called star. And if the product has low share position in growth period, the product is called problem child. And if the product has high share position in declining period, the product is called cash cow. And if the product has low share position in decline period, the product is called dark. This chart shows each classification and a graph with the growth rate of the market on the vertical axis and the degree of share position in the market on the horizontal axis. Basically, it is used by companies with multiple business to determine how to invest and distribute assets for each business and product. I'll explain the strategic point for each classification. Firstly, problem child. The market share is low and the market growth rate is high. The product has just been launched and the revenue is still low but it had the potential to grow in the future. Due to the high market growth rate, the competitive situation is getting tougher. So investment for product development and marketing is also required, and it is difficult to generate profit. If the problem child increases market share, it can be raised into star. So for problem child, it is advisable to invest asset obtained from the other business. However, if it is difficult to gain share, you should consider to withdraw the market as soon as possible. Next, star. 
it has a high market share and high market growth rate. And it is truly a star. It's profitable and has the potential to grow again. Although it has a high market share and is easy to make a profit. Competition is tough due to its high market growth rate. It is advisable to maintain the star and move to cash cow while maintaining the expanding its market share. It is desirable to continue aggressive investment in order to survive the tough competitive situation. Next, cash cow. The market share is high and the market growth rate is low. Revenue peak. The product life cycle is from maturity to decline period. Competition is mild due to low market growth and growth and huge new entrant. So it is easy to generate stable profit. For cash cow, you can generate profit without investing too much money. While maintaining the current market share, it is a good idea to use the profit generated by the cash cow for business investment such as problem child and stair. Finally, dark. Both market share and market growth rate are low. Revenue are small and there is no chance of growth in the future. It does not require the investment due to its low market growth rate. Uh, and it cannot generate profit due to its low market share. Since there is no prospect of business growth, it is a good idea to withdraw at the right time. The idea flow is to grow problem channel with the profit generated by cash cow and develop Provincials into star, which is called the success sequence. The other hand, the process of changing from a provincial to a dog, or from a star to a dog, is called the disaster sequence. PPM is related to the market growth rate and relative market share. Merit of PPM analysis can be used to analyze multiple business of your company or competitor. By knowing the current state of your company's business and product, you can prioritize the investment allocation of management resources, making it easier to make management decisions. The other hand, I want to say a huge demerit of PPM. One, the major demerit of PPM analysis is that it cannot grasp or predict various complex aspects of the business because it de determines the potential of the business only on the two axes of limited market growth and relative market share. Second, PPM analysis requires the numeric figure of share and market growth rate. But for some business area, it is difficult to obtain such a data. Third demerit. It is not useful for small company. So I can say the range of effect use of PPM is a little bit limited. Okay, I introduced many frameworks in this session. Although it is the analysis step that is directly related, the framework is also effective in the term of integration into hypothesis and con conclusion. So I hope it help helpful for your process to create management strategy. And if you are interested in the lecture and want to learn more, please visit Jack website and contact to institution nearest your office. This is the end of session. Thank you very much.